turn my mic up. Boy, yo. Take there. Yeah, yeah, uh. On the road to the riches. Life takes a toll like bridges. Good friends become foes and snitches. Better watch who knows in your business. Welcome to the show. Um, everybody, uh, this is my man Dante Dean. I've known Dante for a very long time, so it's really a pleasure to have him on the show. Um, this is a young brother that, um, you know, I, I actually saw, you know, working for somebody as a driver who, who transitioned um, into entrepreneurship. Um, you know, when I originally met him, you know, I, I always saw that he had that in him. He always had that spirit. We always talked about entrepreneurship. And um, he's one of those brothers that didn't just talk about it. He did it. So um, today, you know, I just want to sit down and, and, and just kind of go through your story um, your journey, um, you know, from, from the start, man, where, where, where it started um, and what got you to this point, where we're at now, and, and what's your plans for the future. All right. So welcome to Truck and Hustle. And you are truly <laughs> the truck and hustler. <laughs> hustle, right. hustle every day, man. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Um, all right. So let's start from the beginning, um, um, Dante, man. What, 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 get, where are you from? Um, tell, tell the audience a little bit about yourself, um, just to give them a little bit of background. All right. So, um, I'm from, I'm from West, I, I was born in West, grew up a little bit of West. Um, now, you say West, West that's Southern. West, that's West Philly, correct? Yeah, Philadelphia? West Philly. Yeah. Okay. West let's Philly, the West side. The West There's side. A, lot of, a lot of West side. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Yeah, I grew up. <laughs> All right. I was born on the West side of Philly, uh, grew up over there, um, then moved to the county later on. Okay. Um, I jumped. I pretty much jumped in the truck and twenty years old. Um, didn't really had nothing to lose, so I just jumped right into it. I took a. I took a risk, pretty much. Okay. And um, everything just been good ever since. You know. Now, now you said you just jumped into it. You didn't have anything to lose. I mean, what made you just jump into it? Did you always have a love for trucks, or did you know somebody you knew? Oh, yeah. Well, um, my pop, you know, rest in peace, my pop, he was a CDL driver. Okay. He drove for probably about 30 years, probably maybe long, even longer than that. I always known him for always just being a professional driver. So um, I had gotten into a situation where, you know, I ain't have, I ain't have nothing. I ain't had nothing at all. And um, I just thought that I would kill two birds with one stone, make some money. Plus, have a little place to live at the same time. Okay. Go over the road, see the world, because I was in a bubble. Like, okay. all I knew was West Philly, Southwest, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Southwest. Right. That was it. So, right. that was just a whole new journey for me as well. And um, it definitely was a, a hell of an experience. Okay. I went from coast to coast, all the way down to the border of Mexico, all the way up to Canada. Done. Literally seeing this whole country, met a whole lot of people, uh, learned a lot. It really opened my mind. Like, it really opened my mind. Mm. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so yeah, so tell me more about that. So you said you started out, how long did you drive over the road? I was over the road driving from uh, coast to coast probably about two years because I was 20 years old. Okay. Um, jumping into it. So a lot of companies, their minimum age was 23. So... A lot of companies didn't take me on, so I had I had to just stick with it until I got a little older. Okay. Then um, when I got a little older, then I jumped uh, into regional. And um, I was working for a company called Night Transportation for a couple years. And uh, that was an experience because I ran the whole east side from Maine all the way down to Florida. Okay. And uh, that definitely taught me a lot. Gotcha. And then... Um, if you fast forward the clocks uh, a little bit more, um, then that's when I switched over to Rider. <laughs> okay, okay, of course, <laughs> Rider. And, and and that's where we met. Yeah, that's where me and you met. Okay, you know, me and you met the good brother. <laughs> you know, you de <laughs> no doubt. Brother, first of all, you know, shout out to you. Definitely, um, our conversations definitely opened my mind to a whole lot more. No doubt. No you, doubt. I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate for that. For real. For real. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. 
And we've had we've had many, you know, good conversations, you know, never wasting words, man. We make sure every time that we do connect and we do talk, it's always we, we bring some kind of value to each other. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I even, exactly. I even recall the last time that we actually spoke, you were telling me about some issues that you were having with the truck and you were having a little bit of turn. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm yeah. Like, Yo, man, just hang in there. You're you going to make it happen. I don't know how. You don't know how, but you're going to make it work. And then, like, a couple months later, I see you on the gram and you back on the road doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all about just um, just sticking with it and um, and being consistent, you know? Yeah, it was just, you know, just like you said, just staying consistent. I, I had a vision. Like, when I was out there on the road uh, going from coast to coast, it was it was like you're by yourself. So you don't have – all you have is time to think, you know? Right. That's all you have, especially right. um, coming from a background I was in where I was constantly around people, you okay. know? I never had – really had that time to myself to really think about what I want to do in life and stuff like that. So every night just uh, driving, driving. And first of all, this was, I started back when we were doing paper logs. <laughs> when, <laughs> without the, rest without in, the 30 rest minutes. Of paper logs. <laughs> rest in peace of the paper logs. <laughs> Good old days. <laughs> Bro, without the 30 minute break. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Oh man, the 30 minute without break. Without the 30 that. minute break. Like, I, so I would get up, get all my snacks together, get in a truck, drive 11 hours straight nonstop. I'll right. probably, <laughs> listen, I'm going to keep it real with you. I'll probably right, stop sure, sure. one time I mean, sure, and take I'm a piss. I'm sure plenty of people yeah, can listen. identify with that. Real right. I'll probably stop one time, take a piss on the side of the road, and just keep going nonstop. Right, right, until right. Until the 11th hour and, and, go, and go to sleep. But that time really gave me, um, it really gave me time to really think about what I really wanted in life and stuff like that, you know? Okay. Especially, um, Growing, growing up, and you know, just being in uh, West, between West, uh, the county, Southwest, and stuff. You know, uh, a lot happened in the streets. You know, a lot, of, a lot of stuff happened in the streets to you that really traumatized you over so let, time. So, let, 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 let's let's get into that. So, you know, you grew up West Philadelphia. Um, mm-hmm. how, how how were you able to, as a young man? Because I know it's very very easy to fall into the traps of the streets, mm-hmm. um, especially when it's all around you and, you know, everybody, you know, your, your people and, and, and what have you, everybody's doing kind of the same thing in the same rat race, um, headed in the same direction. How were you able to separate yourself from that? And, and, and what gave you that mindset to know that you wanted different and you wanted something more or something, you know, better? What, where did that come from? How did you get that? Well, you know, um, you know, shout out to my older brother, He's uh, right now. He's locked down. He pretty much um, was over. He was out in the streets like real heavy. So he pretty much opened my eyes to it, and was like, you know, this ain't the life you really want to live. You know, for the rest of your life. You know, it ain't right. It ain't getting you nowhere. He was also a man that was trying to transition over to a better life. He always okay. spoke. To, he also always spoke to me about having my own business, trying to do business ventures together. Mm. And, you know, I listened to him, but, you know, I was still young. So <laughs> right, 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 I was right. still running around. It's like, yeah, like I hear that. you, bro. Yeah, it's like, good. yeah, I hear you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm still out here, uh, still doing my thing, too. Right. And it, it took for only for a few situations that happened to me to just say, you know what? That's it. Like, <laughs> right, right, right. That's it, right, right. you know? Okay. Like, stuff just, bad stuff just keep happening, you know? Okay. Over and over, whether you doing it or you around somebody that's doing it, right? It all comes right back around to you. So I just decided to just get away, just jump in the truck, just get away, and you know, really turn my life around. Got and, you, uh, got you. Shout out to your big bro. Definitely, definitely. And I, I stayed out there. Like I was coming back home like once a month. Okay. And I still wasn't like running in the streets. I was like sleeping in the truck for real, like come back to Philly once a month, sleep in a truck, back out. I did that for uh, two, a couple years. And when I officially came back to driving regional, coming home every weekend, I just see everything just change. <laughs> everything okay. just changed. Like those guys that you was running with, half of them dead, half of them in jail, mm. you know? Mm. 
And it was just like, damn, it just woke me up even more. Like, damn, gotcha. that could have been you, you know, that could have sure. been you. For so sure. it was like, uh, you know, I just decided I'm just going to keep trucking. Okay. See how far it go. And it really turned, like you said, it really turned me into a, uh, like an entrepreneur. Now it gave me the motivation to drive to officially go out and look for other business ventures and, you know, really bring it home. And, right. you know, most importantly, I want to leave something for my kids. You feel okay. me? Okay. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a good, uh, a good segue. So um, you said the word entrepreneur. Why is entrepreneurship um, so important to you. Um, other than, I mean, cause you could make money driving for somebody else. You know what I mean? There's, yeah. there's jobs out there that'll pay you. Why is that word important? Why is that something that, you know, um, that's important to you? Or is it important to you? Is it something that we, 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 we should all be striving for? Mm-hmm. You're right. it's, it's important for me because, you know, like, it's all right, you know, I ain't going to knock anybody's hustle is wherever your, you know, your comfort zone is. If you want to work for Somebody else is going to work for a company. Cool. You know, that's your comfort zone. That's what pays the bills. But me, you know, I just want to do something bigger. I want to leave a whole legacy behind. You feel me? Okay. Like, I really want to leave something behind for my kids to really push forward with because I didn't have that growing up. You feel me? Right. And the way I look at it, it has to start from somewhere. You okay. Know? It has okay. to start from somewhere, even if... Even if I started and I don't make it all the way to the top, at least somebody else could pick that where I left off and take that even further. Right, right. You know? Okay, okay. So, so getting started, um, actually making that transition into entrepreneurship, um, how difficult was that? I mean, because, you know, it's probably like a brand mm-hmm. thing for you. It's not something that you've never done before, really. Mm-hmm. Getting into the trucking business as an entrepreneur, as an owner, as opposed to, you know, just driving for somebody else. How, how, how was that? And, 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 you know, just tell me a little bit about that, that experience for you. Um, that experience, it was, uh, first of all, just making a decision to finally just step outside of my comfort zone, just take the risk. Just making that decision was, was a little difficult, you know, just stepping outside of what you used to doing. Right. And it's like now, you know, just pushing forward to entrepreneurship. You got to work a little bit harder and dedicate more time towards the goal. And, um, you know, it, it, it was difficult at first, but now I'm at a point now where it's like probably in the, I'm probably in the middle with it. You know, I'm not, I'm not at the top, like, you know, <laughs> right, right, right. I, you know, I ain't, I ain't rich, but. You feel me? But it's right, for definitely sure. way better than comp- it definitely was way better than company driving and um the peace of mind that comes with it is mm. also better because right. you see me, I started out, it was like, all right, I got the truck, then all this a snowball of bad stuff just started happening. You know, right, 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 right. If getting the truck wasn't hard enough. Okay. You feel me? Okay. If getting the truck wasn't hard enough and you know, Thank God I had good people in my corner to, to you know, to really help out with that. You know, shout out to my wife. You know, she, yeah. she definitely uh, was a big help with that as far as, you know, pushing me and, you know. Right. Motivating you to move forward. Motivating me to move forward. And, you know, when we, when I, re- I literally reached rock bottom when, after I got that truck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> the real man and, real. And for real i'm gonna keep it all the way on it yeah and you know just motivating me to just jump back on that horse and uh you know keep moving forward right and uh eventually got back on the road with it and uh was doing good ever since now let me ask you when you first got started i mean i'm sure you probably talked to talk to guys right you talk to other people yeah. their own business or whatever like what was some of the feedback or some of the advice that you were getting um, and, and, and did it feel like it was positive, like moving you forward? Or did you get like a lot of negative, like, like, you know, like, don't do this, don't do that. You know, is, is this no money, there's no money in this, there's no money in that. <laughs> let, let me hear about s- some of that, you know, that, cause I, I know, I know you had to get it. Yeah, man. Listen, um, when I first started out, you know, after I was driving for a few months, you know, I started thinking, you know, let me get my own truck. Also, my older brother was pushing me to get my own truck. Okay. But, 
back when I first started, I heard a whole lot more negative feedback behind it than I do now. Okay. You okay. know, okay. it was like, guys just kept coming. And, you know, I'm young. I'm like 20, 21. So guys is like, oh, don't do that. Don't do this. You know, I did this and it didn't work out and da 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 right. And, you know, during that time, too, I'm still, you know, I'm still learning. And I'm, get the, I'm still really getting to know myself. So I just kept trucking uh, as a company driver. Okay. I even had... Um, I even had the opportunity to even get my own truck when I left regional, the truck I was driving, and I even turned that down because of all the negative feedback behind it. It made me feel like I wasn't ready, you know? Okay, okay. But as I grew older, I learned to really block out all that negativity, you know, because you got some people out here, if they feel like they couldn't do it, then they feel like you couldn't do it. You can't do it, you know? Right. And, um, you know, I just learned how to block out all that negative feedback. And I just later, I just went for it because, okay. and also I started later. Also, I started getting better feedback about it as well from other okay. truck drivers. Like, oh, yeah, how about you do this? Shoot, a lot of guys from uh, Rider. They okay. They were to do it. <laughs> how about okay. you do this? How right. about you do that? You know, uh, shout out. To, um, you know, um, shout out to Alex. He was one of the first guys in our little circle to go push forward and go get a truck. Okay. And, uh, you know, he gave me a whole lot of help, a whole lot of good feedback on getting your own truck. And, you know, I finally just said, I'm taking everything and I'm out. <laughs> I'm okay. going to get my own truck. All right, you know. so so let, let's 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 get into the 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 meat of 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 the business a little bit more, right? Because that's what everybody wants to hear. You know, people who are aspiring to do what you have done, and mm -hmm. um, you know, listening, they want to know what what it takes um, financially. What do you have to to shell out in the in the beginning to to find your truck? How did you find your truck? How much did you spend? Um, did you buy it all out at once? Did you lease it? Mm -hmm. How what, how'd that work out for you? Bruh, I'm not even going to lie. I barely had enough. <laughs> I barely had enough money to buy this damn truck. You okay. Know? okay. 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 Um, I pretty much, I, I went into it with literally the, the bare minimum uh, down payment. They wanted like 7,500 down okay. to even get the truck, you know? Okay. And that's just what, you know, your, that's, your credit don't even have to be top of the line, you know? Okay. And for 7500 <laughs> what type of truck are you looking at? What type of truck are you getting? And, and what's the, the total um, of the truck? So 7500 down, you're probably looking at any truck under the total value of about, i say about 20, 25 grand. Okay. Okay. You know, anywhere so you, underneath you, you that. You started with a truck um, realistically for around 25, 25, 30 grand, somewhere around there. Yep. Okay. With 7,500 down, you know, if your credit immaculate, you already know if your credit good, you don't really have to spend much down at right, all. All right. It, at minimum, probably like $1,000 or $2,000 down, depending on um, where you're getting your truck from and stuff like that. Okay. But um, it definitely it definitely wasn't easy getting this truck because I got shot down at a lot of places I tried to get a truck, you know? Okay. If you, if you come in with at least 10 grand, you get a truck guaranteed. They probably won't even look at your credit. Okay. If you come okay. in with at least 10, down, 10 grand down. But okay. if you come in with anything lower than that, you need to have the credit to get there. And also, I recommend having at least like another five to 10 grand on the side after okay. you get the truck. Okay. So any kind of maintenance, repairs, uh, anything like that. Okay. And warranties, warranties are important. I personally, I personally hate warranty companies, man. Right. Like, <laughs> right. You, got, you got your good ones, you got your bad ones, man. I personally hate warranty companies, but right. warranties, they are, they are important because some of these parts on some of these trucks you already know could run you up anywhere between two to three grand. Okay. On fixes. Okay. And, um, you know, I recommend getting a dealership warranty. Okay. That's if they have a warranty. Okay. And um, unless you go into a private seller, 
just make sure you have all that paperwork on any kind of repairs done to the truck or anything like that. Okay. And so still. When you got your truck, you pretty much checked it out yourself and, and, and just went yeah. through it. I mean, you, you, you kind of good with your hands a little bit to where you could, you know, if the truck was, was uh it wasn't a lemon basically you know is what i'm exactly <laughs> and me i i had like experience you know working on my own car and stuff like that okay i'm not i wasn't really too familiar with diesel engines but okay. what i did was i did my homework on like google and youtube and stuff like that pretty much getting more familiar on the truck that i'm looking at so i know what to look for as i do my inspection you know upon getting the truck but i highly recommend taking a mechanic <laughs> got you got you <laughs> You know <Okay. laughs> like they might they might charge you up uh, right coming out to, to look at that truck but, but it's worth it it's going yeah it's worth it because uh some of these some of these dealerships they they like to finesse <laughs> okay with, they like to finesse cut corners with these trucks just to make a quick sale so just make sure you, you do your, you do your research on the dealership you know, and, or you do your research on a private seller that you're buying a truck from. Okay. Okay. So, 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 you, so you got your truck and I'm sure um, we probably skipped a step because prior to getting your truck, I'm sure you knew what type of business you were going to get into, right? As far mm -hmm. as um, what you're going to be doing with that truck. So what, what is it that you do? Um, give us an idea of, 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 of the type of uh, trucking that you do, because we all know there's all different types yeah. of move, right? So let's get a little bit more specific. What type of trucking do you do? Um, just, just explain that to the audience so they understand. All right. So right now with my own truck, I run containers. Okay. I run containers out of the Packer, Penn, and Gloucester. I even been to the ports up in North Jersey, the the worst ports probably on the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. On down to the ports in Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. And um it's it's it's, it's definitely different from running dry vans and, and reefers, because I also okay. did that type of work. Um, because the containers, of course, you have it it's like almost running flatbeds. Because you know, the containers, of course, you got to grab the chassis and then you got to go into the port. Then they got to get you the container itself, put it on the chassis. You got to tie it down with the pins. And you definitely need tough skin to run these containers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because when you, say, you say tough skin, you mean from a perspective of just like patience or just dealing with mm -hmm. the ports themselves? What What's the trick to that? Because I hear so much different stories about the ports, about... Um, you know, making sure you get there early or, mm -hmm. you know, having somebody shuttle you the loads. Like what, what, what's the magic, the, the, the magic bullet to, to making sure that your experience with the ports um, is decent as opposed to mm -hmm. the headache? Because I, I hear this a lot. That's one of the things that drive people out of that business, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, because it's, it's so, such a headache. So how, how do you deal with that? Like what's your system to deal with that? All right. So pretty much like pretty much patience. You have okay. to have patience. Okay. Uh, dealing with the the ports as well as the other drivers that's also fighting their way inside the port to go get a load. Okay. So they could go take us to its destination. Okay. And um, pretty much what I do, like you said, I got get you have to get to the port early because if you sit up here and you got uh, an appointment time in like Bethlehem for eleven o'clock, you better make sure you're at that port when it opens at six thirty seven o'clock. Okay. Because the port, the port is wild. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's fast paced and you have to know what you're doing and where you're going in that port or everybody going to go around you. Okay. You know? Okay. Uh, especially, um, I'm pretty much, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody that heard about the legendary um, Packer, Packer okay. port. Packer port. Okay. <laughs> That's a Packer and, um, port. All right. Yeah, the legendary. It's, it's crazy over there, huh? Yeah, I mean, the name speaks for itself. It's packed. <laughs> it's packed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And if you don't know what you're doing in that port, you will get skipped. And okay. If you get skipped, you're going to be there for hours. And you're gotcha. going to miss your appointment time, and you're going to miss your money. Okay. And I think that's what drives a lot of guys out of the port because, you know, they get into the port, and they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. So... What I did when I first started, I pretty much just started talking to other truck drivers, you know? I'm just like, uh, here, my ticket say this, you know, where to go. You, you got, believe it or not, you got, you got a lot of nice guys in the port. 
Okay. Um, you do got, you know, some of your jackasses in the port, but sure, I, that's anywhere you go. Right, right, right. But <laughs> um, you do got some nice guys that will definitely help you out. You just got to open your mouth pretty much. You know, uh, one of the biggest things they say with the container work is, you know, closed mouth don't get fed. Got you, got you. <laughs> you have to open. You have to open your mouth. You have to, you have to speak up. Yep, or else uh, just run right over you. Exactly. Uh, okay. Not and that's that ain't just with the ports. That's also with these companies y'all leasing y'all trucks onto mm. as well. Okay. Got got to open your mouth or you will get ran over and uh, they will put you out of business. <laughs> wow. Okay. So <laughs> what, what's a typical day for you? You said you get up early. Um, you're there before six six a.m. six thirty. Mm -hmm. How long are you working every day? What days are you working? Um, how, how, is, how does that work? So pretty much um, I have a system with it. Um, when I first started out, started out, I used to deal with a place and they had me on schedule going to the port first thing in the morning, running a load and uh, going back to the port and running another load. You know, I ain't, I ain't really like that. Um, the better system I have, I like the get my load for, like i like to get my load from this start from friday so okay i get done my work i get my load for monday okay and i like to always get my load a day before versus so you set you set up in the port in the morning yeah you I set, set up, up your week on friday yep okay for monday okay all right yep and i like to get my load always the day before so that way i'm not getting held up in the port you know okay are you always able to get it in advance like that? Is that yeah, it actually it actually works out a lot with um you know with the company I'm dealing with. They okay. it, it works it works out perfectly every every single day. Maybe once in a while when the work get a little slow, I had to be at the port first thing in the morning okay. to drag my load out. But for the most part, I'm getting my load the day before and um with containers, let's just say I'm I'm running to Landover, Maryland. Okay. I'll grab a, I'll get my load for Landover, Maryland the day before. I'll run it in the morning. Um, and, you know, of course, container loads, it takes up to two hours to unload. Okay. And um, I'm right back and in the house probably in like about eight, nine hours. Okay. That's if, that's if the port don't hold you up on the way back. Got you. Got you. <laughs> yeah. Got you. But, the ports they usually close uh, like about four or five o'clock. Okay. So if you're getting back uh, towards the end of the day, they try and go home anyway. So they try and get you out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. So so it's basically one tr one trip a day, um, eight nine hours, and that's what Monday through Friday. Yep, Monday through Friday. I okay. do know guys they do run uh, two three containers a day. I personally used to do it when I first started out. But um, you just got you just got to make sure you had the right truck to do that to run like that. Okay. Because that really those containers are heavy. They, Did you see a significant um, change in, in in what you were um, grossing um, when you were doing multiple containers? Was it a big difference, or do you feel like just running the way you're running now is is pretty much just evens out to be the same? Like, how does that work? Yeah, um, it's it's not much of a difference. It's really not much of a difference. And um, at the end it pretty much really do work itself out because I'm spending uh, less money in fuel, tolls, and maintenance. Okay. Okay. Now, where, where do you get your, your, your loads from? Do you deal, you deal with a freight broker? Yep. All right. Do you deal with multiple yeah. brokers? How do you choose your broker? How do you build those relationships? Well, how, how does that work? Uh, pretty much, I just deal with, I just deal with one broker. Um, I don't have my own authority yet. Okay. But... You know, that's definitely going to come in the future. So right now I'm leasing on to a company. Okay. And um, they pretty much find the routes for me. Uh, they give me a selection of routes to choose from. And uh, we just go from there, you know. Okay. And uh, the relationship between uh, me and them has been good. Like okay. say, you have your good, you have your good companies that you deal with. And um, you also have your bad companies that you deal with. Gotcha. But me and that relationship, me and um, the relationship between them, it definitely, it's it been good. They'll okay. find, just let them know. You pretty much go to these companies if you listen on to, and you let them know what you want. Okay. Pretty much. And okay. they let you know what they expect from you. Okay. You already know you, you're a business owner. You That's your truck at the end of the day. And right. that's what I try to remind, you know, 
every driver out here that also come to me because now it's getting to a point where it's new drivers coming in and, you know, now everybody coming to me asking me questions in the port and stuff like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm starting to be the OG now. <laughs> and I haven't even been there that long. Right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, um, you know, I just remind everybody, you know, that's your truck. That's okay. your truck at okay. the end of the day. And um, it pretty much one hand washing the other. Keep that in mind, too. Okay. Don't just say, you know, this is my truck. F this. F that. <laughs> <laughs> Shove your load up your ass. You know, you got gotcha, gotcha, you gotcha. to keep in mind, too, like, uh, these. You got to keep in mind, too, that these companies, they're, they're also giving you work. So one okay. hand washing the other. And open your mouth got gotcha. you because also if you're a good driver like that's it's really important to keep your keep that mouth open you keep know? that mouth open because Both mouth don't get fed exactly and know your worth mm, know your worth. worth because if you're a good driver companies will recognize that and okay. they don't want to lose you okay you okay. know okay all right um <clears throat> so let me see um what so, so right now you have your truck, right? What, what is your, um, well, actually, you know, before I get into that, this is something that I know people want to hear and people want to touch on. Let's talk about financials a little bit. Um, what can someone expect to make um, if, if, if they're running the ports, um, you, know, after, um, you know, after their expenses? Um, what are some of those expenses? What are some of the big expenses that you may not be thinking about? um you know insurance so forth and so on can you go through that a little bit just just give me an idea from a financial standpoint if i wanted to invest what 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 will i be taking home um you know weekly and what will some of my expenses be so forth and so on all right so um with the expenses leasing on to a company it all depends on how they're paying with the loads you know it all depends on how they're paying with those i dealt with three different companies that all three of them pay a little bit differently. Okay. You know? And um, that will pretty much make and break you right there. Could you pretty could you, <laughs> break, could you break down that, that that those differences a little bit for people who don't? Um, so let's all right. So for example, I worked for one company and they paid like a little rolling scale type, like you know, almost like a, a previous company that I worked for. They paid like a rolling scale, and it it pretty much came down to like you're paying, you're being paid mileage, you know? Okay. And um, that could definitely uh, make, that could definitely be a big difference as far as your finances, depending on how far you're driving, where you're going. Right. And how much fuel you're burning. Okay. In order to get done that route. Okay. And um, right now, or you could be getting paid by the load. And what they say is, uh, you know, let's just say, for example, you're getting paid seventy percent of the drainage. Okay. And um, to me, that's a better way of getting paid. Okay. Like being paid seventy percent of the drainage. Okay. And um, uh, yeah, and pretty much, um, you're getting paid seventy percent of the drainage. That'll cover like your fuel, tolls, and depending on who you're dealing with. They might give you back a fuel surcharge. Okay. Which is always good. Okay. Could you explain and what the what, what the drainage is? What seventy percent of the drainage? What does that mean? It's pretty much what they're getting paid for. You know? Okay. Um, okay. working you know, leasing through companies, they're like, Yeah, yeah. Got you. So you you're, you're taking like more ownership into that load, that actual load. You're getting a piece of that pie as exactly. opposed to or paid my uh, mileage or whatever the case may be. Exactly. Okay, got you. So you're like you're like partnering with the uh with the with the freight brokerage for, for the most part in that scenario. Mm -hmm. So and you, if you you would advise anybody to look for that type of deal. Yeah, look for that type of deal. Um, telling that that's probably pretty much the best way to go with this. Okay. And like I said, you're owner, you're owner operator. So I would want to feel like you know I'm getting a piece of the pie versus getting paid. You know, like I'm working, like I'm working as a company driver. Right. How much say do you and, uh, have? I mean, how much flexibility do they give you when it comes to negotiating what your rates are? Um, is that something that's like kind of like they're like, this yeah. is what you're doing? Or is this something where you could say, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going for that. I prefer to do this. Like, how, how do you do how you deal with that? Oh, yeah. It, de it depends on um, it depends on the company. You just 
like I said, closed mouth, don't get fed. Just go, okay. <laughs> like, okay. just go out to them, just ask them, you know, pretty much what y'all getting paid for this. Right. You know, and right. if that company is, uh, mm, how should I say it? That company, you know, honest enough, they'll tell you. Okay. Like, you know, this is what we're getting paid for. So you straight you know, up ask them how much this load pays you. How much yeah. does this load pay you? <laughs> right, exactly. right, right, right. Yeah, no, because you're you trying know, to give me like receipts. $150 and I know you're getting like 2500 off this load. Exactly. Okay. Okay, got And you. I got to stay there all day. You know, I got to run up and down the hills with the load and stuff like that. Like, right. no. <laughs> right, right, right. 100%. 100%. And um, as far as insurances and stuff like that, um, you can get your insurance through the the company as well that you're dealing with. Okay. Um, just make sure that you read in the policies on, you know, make sure you know the policy, everything that they cover and stuff like that before you go ahead and take a company insurance as well as their plates. Okay. Um, I'm hearing from uh, other drivers too that getting your own plates is the best way to go because you'll save more in the long run versus getting plates from the actual company. Okay. 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 But, um, so that's something that you have to look into. You, 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 you with the company plates at this? Yeah, I'm, st- yeah, I'm still with the company plates. Okay. I'm still with the company plates right now. I'm definitely working on that well. Okay. Um, but leasing through a company, I say, is a good way to get started. Okay. Because it's like a sense of security behind it. Gotcha. Because like I said, too, you build a relationship with whoever you're leasing on to, they'll start scratching your back as well. Like okay. a lot. Okay. You know, I ran into a couple situations myself first getting uh first getting started to where, you know, I needed some help. Right. Company uh helped me out, got me back on the road, and um, you know, we was good. Gotcha. And, but I, that's if that's if you're a good driver. <laughs> <laughs> that big if. That big if. That big if. <laughs> so um, you know, I keep you know, I gotta keep I gotta keep saying that because I hear a lot of downfalls with guys and it's just like uh, it's like you know what well you know what happened uh what did you do right and say oh well you know this happened you know i did this i did well why did you do that <laughs> and you expect them <laughs> and you expect them to help you right like, right, 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 right you right. know you expect right. them to help you like it ain't no it, it, it don't work like that you can't you can't be an f up and you know just expect somebody to pick you up every single time you gotta right you it's gotta, all about you, reciprocity yeah, exactly. at the end of the day, if, if, if you're making them money they're more than happy to help you keep on making them money and exactly money as well because if you're making money they're making money everybody's happy right you can't come and be a burden uh running up somebody's csa score right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Exactly. exactly you know got you got you got you got you all right so um this is what oh. this is what your second or third year in business now um, this is my second year in business. Second year in business? Second year in business. All right. So, uh, so, yeah. so give me an idea. What's some of the plans, man? What's, what's going on in your head? Um, where is Dean Logistics? That's the company name, correct? Yep. All right. So where's yeah. Dean well, it's Logistics? Well, it's very King Dean Logistics. Bro. King Dean. King I like Dean. Logistics. Yeah. I like King Dean Logistics. Logistics we got to get that crown. We got to put that Real crown right. on it. Got to put that crown on it. King <laughs> Dean Logistics. All right. So King Dean Logistics, where, where do you see, um, King Dean Logistics in the next Let's say five years. What's the, what's the short the short term goal? Um, and then give me your ten year goal. Where where are we gonna be at in ten years? Um, the short term goal is to pretty much get a couple more trucks, a couple more drivers, to um you know get my definitely get my own authority and also running some reefer trailers. Okay. At first I wanted to run drive in, but the East Coast reefer's been making money over here. Okay. So I'm gonna get a few reefer trailers and we definitely going to get the ball rolling um really invest in some property okay and uh get a few more contracts get a few more contracts and uh, really get the ball rolling and uh long-term goal i want this to really stretch out into like all types of freight not okay. just reefer i want to definitely be in the like flatbed Okay. Oversized. I was even thinking about towing, possibly investing into some kind of wrecker. Okay. Um, having my own shop, just pretty much being fully invested into myself. Right, right, right. And not really having thing. to rely. Yeah. Like, really Nip, like Nipsey said. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
Okay. 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 So, 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 so that's, so we have a good idea of five years. You said 10 years, you just want to basically be running, running up the scoreboard for the most part. Running up the scoreboard. We're just going to keep climbing, climbing higher to the top and not just, I don't just want to do trucking. I want to also branch off into other things like, okay. you know, real estate, apparel, you know, just really getting into that full entrepreneurship, get, dipping my hand in a little bit of everything. Got you. So let me ask you a question. How important um, is branding to you? Actually branding your company. Um, you know, where do you think that, that plays a part in, in, in what, what you do? Actually having a brand, making King Dean Logistics a brand. Do you think that's important as a truck driver? Like, like it would be for another, you know, a, another typical business where you have customers trying to buy something. Cause you know, what, what, what you do is more of a business to business type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. You deal with freight brokers and so forth and so on. So they're going to use you pretty much regardless, right? Because mm -hmm. you're delivering freight for them. But just as a brand, do you think branding is important? And, 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 and how do you go about building your brand if you think that's an important thing? I think branding, I think branding is very important because, uh, you know, like you said, I'm not really dealing with people on a personal level. I'm dealing with uh, business to business. So, of course, you bring in a truck. They'll use me anyway. They probably get care less, but my name is <laughs> right, 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 right. But I, I still think branding in this business is definitely important because your brand um, identifies you. You know, okay. that identifies okay. who you are, and you could definitely take your brand and branch off, still branch off into other things with your brand. Right. Um, trucking, like I do want to, I do want to get trucking onto like a little personal level with the people like um running certain charities and stuff like that because right okay. now i'd be going to like goodwill distributions okay and um i was just like you know what what if i could uh run some kind of charity like just running donations back and forth you know okay. stuff like that that's dope yeah definitely dope. like really like using the truck to give back like just bringing their trucks like truck trailer out to the park or something like that and just having people just bring whatever they got and just load up the truck and and just running donations just back and forth to anybody who need it right okay From, uh, community to community you know i i really think that um transportation is a is a um it's an industry that um a lot of people are missing you know what i'm saying like i i think mm -hmm. it's a it's, it's a great industry to get into um, it's, it's a low barrier of entry, meaning, you know, pretty much if you have the drive, you can get into it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and, and how, how do we get more people, um, especially more brothers that, that, that look like me and you, how, how do we get the word out that this, this is a billion dollar industry? Um, there, there's money to be made here and, um, you know, we need to get in, you know, before, before we're, 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 we're pushed out. How, how mm -hmm. do we get the word out? And, um, is is that important to you? What what do you what do you think about that? That's definitely important to me because I definitely would like to see more brothers uh in the industry. When I first started, um I really didn't see that many brothers uh really in the industry like that unless I went to like states going like down south like uh anywhere in that area. But now I'm starting to see more and more and more brothers jumping into it and I think we're getting the word out there now, finally. Okay. You, you know, social now. media, I think it's happening now. Social media had changed a lot of that. A lot of that. Do you, so think, like, so you think the people are finally starting to recognize the, the, mm -hmm. the, the truck driver just like they see their local rapper? Like, truck, you could be a fly truck driver, too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You could be a truck driver with Balenciaga's on and, <laughs> and, and standing on the roof of your Maybach, too. I mean, you know, because... The, the 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 money is there you know the money yep. is, is definitely there to be made it's just that it, it's it's to me in in the past has definitely been an industry that's been hidden from us and i agree with you i definitely see the complexion changing you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying now to where you see a, a lot more young guys you know getting involved and getting into it um and I, but i think it could even be more than that i think it's one of the greatest opportunities that's that's there now especially with technology and where things are going mm -hmm. um you know, that's a good question. What do you, how, how do you feel that technology is going to impact trucking in, in, in the next, in the next um, few years? Do you think that your job is going to be replaced by a, a self-driving truck soon, man? <laughs> are, are you nervous? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Listen, I'm not because what I tell, I'm a local joker now. Okay. 
you cannot replace the local joker. <laughs> yeah, you know, robots can't open the doors by themselves. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, right. like so. So, so I mean, do you think really... do you think that we'll ever have a point to where we're actually there's actually self driving, you know, trucks at at, at, at mass to to where it's yeah. majority. I mean, of course they're gonna have them. You know, mm-hmm. but do you think it'll ever be a point in our lifetime where they'll be at mass, where we'll be driving, and there'll be a bunch of trucks driving with nobody in there? Like, <laughs> what, do you see that as a as a, as a possibility possibility in the future? I do see it as a possibility in the future. I just don't think me and you will be around to see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But uh, I do feel like a lot of drivers' jobs will be replaced because okay. of technology. I do feel like that. But okay. they cannot. They they definitely not going to get rid of all of us anytime soon. Right. But right. Right. I do like. I do like where technology is going with it. Okay. I do like it. Okay. But um, you know, but what I don't like about it is you know, so many people going you know, at risk of losing their job mm, over mm. it. Gotcha. But it's still certain trucking jobs that. You probably will never be able to send a robot to go do like you know you can't you know you're not gonna see no robot on ice road truckers. There you go. <laughs> like, there you go. You know. but I mean the thing is if you look at it, even like airplanes fly themselves now, right? They're they're, yeah. they're on autopilot, but you still have to have a, a a human being there just in case something happens to always mm-hmm. take over manually to always always oversee it. So that's probably what would not to cut you off. That's probably what it would be for 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 a while. Right, <laughs> safety right. drivers. So you'll be able to play with hours of service, maybe a little bit, you know. To mm-hmm. hey man, I'm not I'm not driving, man. The truck's driving itself, you know. But then you <laughs> jump up on. So so things have to change up a little bit. But ultimately, I don't think you can get rid of the truck driver. Like you can, you know, perhaps get rid of a cashier in 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 in, in Giant or something like that. Or, mm-hmm. Right. Because, you know, there's self-checkout now. And even though there's self-checkout, there's still people overseeing the self-checkout, right? Exactly. So, I mean, imagine that. You put in a whole truck, 80,000 pounds on the road, you know, and then, and then on top of that, people are a nightmare, right? That's an insurance exactly. nightmare. People running into these trucks and stuff like that. Even if the truck is perfect, people aren't going to be perfect. But at the end of the day, it'll still be the truck's fault. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's, it's 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 really a nightmare. Like I don't even understand why they're going Man. towards that with the trucks, and it's just gonna take a lot of. of it's gonna tr- take a lot of time. It's gonna and take everything. a lot of. Mm-hmm. It'll almost have to be like the Jetsons, to where the roads like a conveyor belt, and the truck is just put on the road and it just goes, and everybody's just <laughs> not touching anything, right? And I don't think we're right. gonna get anytime soon. Right. Even with these self-driving cars, man. Yeah. These <laughs> cool. Yeah. These, um, just being on the road with these self-driving cars, yeah, it, it's something else. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure, for like, sure. All right, now, you, um, I, I I follow you on Instagram, um, and I just want to talk about this real quick on Instagram, and I and I and 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 I noticed personally that you have taken a um, um, <clears throat> let me see what's a what's a good word, um, you you you've made it a priority to you know um always speak some good words put some good energy out there um what are you trying to do with that what 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 are you what, where are you going with that um are you just doing it for yourself personal for your for your couple thousand followers that you got you know i ain't gonna put you out there like that but you got a couple <laughs> followers out there you know so who are you speaking to and, and and why are you doing that why is that important to you for you to do that on a consistent basis because I, I just like putting good energy into the air you know I, i'm pretty much doing it not only for myself but but anybody else, because the way I feel about social media is like somebody come to your page, you know, right now you're influencing them. And just like if somebody come into your house, you want somebody to come into your house and leave your house happy. Mm. So that's what I want people to do pretty much with me on social media. I want you to you know, be able to come to my page and, you know, just leave my page happy like mm. filled with positivity i don't gotcha. want nobody to you know come on and then you know oh you know, <laughs> I, like my man done ruined my whole day <laughs> like, right, you know, right 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 i just I want you. to put that positivity out into the air because uh you know also i had a lot to learn over the course of my lifetime uh you know pretty much finding happiness okay. and you know just bring more peace into my life and I just want to share that energy with everybody else. 
Got you, got you. That's beautiful, man. And you also you also have a YouTube channel as well, right? You do like you kind of do some little tutorials, teaching out Turn. and stuff like that. <laughs> I do. I got a uh, I got a couple old YouTube channels. I definitely got a couple old ones. Um, I have a new one on the way. Okay. Um, most likely it will be named Turnpike Champion because I feel like I'm the champ. Watch man, out! I feel like I'm the Tur champion. Turnpike Champion. Turnpike Champion. I feel like I'm the champion of the Turnpike right now, man. Okay. Like, it, it definitely was a long road. It was a long road to get here, man. I had, <laughs> I had a lot of experiences. If I sit up here and I tell you about all the experiences I had over the road, man, we'll be sitting here all night. Wow. I can imagine <laughs> that. That's the next show. Now, the, the, the listeners got a chance to meet you today. Next time, you know, in, in, in maybe about a, a couple months or so, we, we reach back and see where you're at. On the for journey, sure, for sure, brother, for sure. So, so, um, <clears throat> are you a reader at all? Do you do you read? Yeah, yeah, I read here and there. I try, I try not to just sit on a dock and take naps. Right, right, right. So, I, got you. <laughs> I go, I go, and I just read different stuff. I watch a whole bunch of YouTube videos. Okay, I, I always like to ask like a suggestion, like for somebody you know, because you you you're a brother who who definitely has like a knowledge of himself, and and you mm -hmm. put good energy out there. Like, what what's what's some resources like a, a good read or, or a good person to follow on YouTube or something? You know, what what, what do you do in your spare time? You know, to time to time to give you to feed you to feed you some good positive stuff. So pretty much, um, I I do a lot of this while I'm waiting to get loaded or unloaded. Okay. So I, I just go on like one of my favorite uh Instagram uh influencers is Wallo two six seven. I watch a lot of his stuff. Wallo. Shout out no to doubt. Wallo. His his um, story is extraordinary, man. Extraordinary. You know, to see where that man is coming, I believe less than a year. Mm -hmm. you know, um did like twenty years in prison. I mean that's that I mean, there's no excuse for no anybody. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. No, I mean, no, it, it, nobody has an excuse. I mean, he started with a with a phone in a jail, and has made himself into a, a, a influencer and 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 so many more things with just pure grit and hustle. You know, definitely. I big shout out to big shout out to Wallo. Like okay. he, I watched him when he first made that that Instagram just okay. come up, hustle his way up, and that pretty much is, is, that pretty much inspired me. Right. Um, another user, uh, Gary V. I'm pretty okay. much a lot of people are familiar with him. I watch a lot of his stuff. Okay. And um, I pretty much just like on as far as YouTube, I don't necessarily stick to like just one person. I just browse everything. Like okay. if it if it looks, you know, if it looks motivational, I I watch it. Okay. I watch it and um, also be careful of. Uh, what you watch and read at the same time too, mm. because uh, not everybody has the right advice. Mm. So as you sit up here going on a search to, to be inspired, to be motivated, definitely watch who you retain this information from. Mm. <laughs> that's, gotcha. that's definitely a big thing. <laughs> that's a major key. Major key. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely a major key. All right. Well, well, well. Listen, we're, we're we're about to wrap up. We we we've talked for about an hour now. You know, I, I definitely want to respect your time, and um, I just want you to um, number one, tell the people where they can where they can find you on social media. Um, go ahead. What, it's, what, what, um, what, Instagram, yeah. Instagram, K D L underscore Dean on Instagram. You can uh, also hit me up on Facebook, Dino Dean on uh, Facebook. Uh, if I don't get to your request right now, <laughs> because I got like three yes, a lot of requests in the in inbox, here. man. You got a lot of requests. <laughs> for real. <laughs> Definitely so, so, uh, so you got to wait your turn. Yeah, look out for uh, my YouTube channel coming soon, Turnpike Champion. And um, I also have, uh, I'm also embarking on a new business venture right now, like just trying to put something together right now. So definitely stay tuned to that. Okay. I don't know if y'all see them. Uh, you go on my Instagram, you you're going to see some black spade emojis on my Instagram. So something coming yeah, soon. I did see the black spade. Could you give us a little bit of insight as to what that is, man? Just a little so, bit. Two more. <laughs> so, Just a little so the, Don't give it all away. <laughs> so the spade, I pretty much, uh, I, I grew up just playing spades, period. And um, I pretty much uh, using that to identify black entrepreneurship. Mm. Because in spades, you know, the spade always wins. Mm. You feel me? 
The mm. spade always I like wins. That. I like that. Okay. So that's why I want to really run with the speed thing and okay. uh, keep that going and see how far and see how far it go. So y'all about to see the, the black spade a lot. Something coming soon. Okay. So everybody look out for those black spades, man. And when you do see it, you, you, you know where it started, right? Yep. That, right here. Uh, the originator. King, <laughs> King Dean. King Dean. Exactly. <laughs> All right, man, listen, thank you for joining me, man. I just want to tell you personally, I'm proud of, of, of everything you've done over the years. I've watched you grow, and it's, it's, it's a pleasure to, to, to be a friend and, and to be able to have this moment to be able to sit down and talk to you about, you know, about your story. And, you know, we just keep on building and moving forward, man. Absolutely, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Always thank you for all your advice, everything, brother. Definitely the good brother, man. Good brother RJ here. <laughs> Make sure y'all always stay tuned. This is a, a smart brother right here, man. Thank you, man. And, and this is for the people, man. This is totally just to get that, um, that information out here and the share value so that we could all win, man. This is what it's all about. Always. All right. Thank <laughs> you, man. I'll talk to you. I appreciate it. I love you, my brother. <laughs> love you too, bro. All right. Later. I'll let you. If you twisted, confused, or stuck about trucks, don't be dumb. This is the place to come. Truck and hustle. Let's go.